How are we doing, guys? Welcome back. So, last time we founded what I assume will be our final, at least the final colony of Act 2. Because, one, they're running out of places to put them. Like, there's literally only these that are uncharted at the moment for us. And also, this bar here is pretty full. Let's be honest. So, we do have most upgrades, I think. We're still waiting to get this one. But, other than that... Alright, and we've got, um... I think this one down here. No, we did this one. Which one's the one we were waiting on the tier 3 for? There was one we were waiting, wasn't there? Oh, this one. Yeah, well, it was. I was looking in the wrong place. So we've got a couple. We need to get some reputation with the Kapala's mission. Maybe we'll be able to do that when we go back to Footfall. But I suspect there's a trade-off to siding with Jay as to getting reputation with them. Uh, this is going to take some time to build up on Viva 6. It's not particularly going to be a problem because we're going to get it very fast because of all the other colonies providing boosts and we're probably going to get it by the time we've done this and then headed all the way back down here so with that all said and done doesn't look like there's a route to these from anywhere we know of so we're going to have to chart our own route i'm going to drop it down to yellow because with these separate systems you end up using this one twice and oranges do carry a higher risk of warp shenanigans uh, the warp jump passed without incident for everyone except the crew members of bridge duty, uh, on bridge duty. For the duration of the voyage, they heard laughter. It seemed to come from outside, through the airtight seal of the ship's massive windows. The laughter went on and on. Uh, the ship left the hostile material and returned to wheel space. Okay, that's leveled up the colony. Like, I told you it was going to go quick. We have eight compli uh, compliancy here. Uh, uh, Lord Captain, a stirring report has come from those quarries of Viva 6. The slave laborers have lost their minds. They forgot how to use the, uh, how to use tools. They huddle together and continue to step aimlessly into the space. Even on the lashes of whips, ruining the mind's deadlines. That doesn't sound like a Drukari thing. I'm confused. Uh, some people get obsessed, uh... Obsessed with using the nails to claw out blasphemous symbols on the tools, on machines, and even on their own bodies. The most mad have painted walls of several mines from ceiling to, uh, from floor to ceiling with symbols that have gone deep into the mining tunnels. Then have gone deep into the mining tunnels. None of them could be found. The wardens consider it a performance to de uh, divert attention away from the escapees and impending rebellion. Okay. Definitely not Drukari stuff. At least not that I know of. Feels more like pirates of some kind. But the symbols don't make sense. What are, what are these symbols being scratched out by slaves? It's hard to give these drawings any sort of intelligent definition. Unnaturally round circles connected by lines. Necrom? The lines are interrupted by a group of dots. The patterns can sometimes follow some sort of logic and sometimes be unique. I can provide pics of them. After examining the pics, you realize that symbols are connected through a strange logistical sequence. Sorry, a strange logical sequence. Could still be Necron, but why would Necron mess? This isn't normally how Necron would work, is my problem. Feels more like a smuggling den or a cult. Wait. Staring into the stars? No. They haven't put them anywhere else in the game. Why? GSC? It'd be very cool if they showed up. Don't get me wrong. But this is a very... I guess if you're not first in 40k this isn't giving the game away and you might make very interesting choices that would have very interesting uh, consequences but if it is GSC ooh hello okay okay uh, it could still be Necron it's just not a way I know Necrons to mess with humans like normally Necrons if they are on a penal colony it's particularly that isn't where you're on the table, would just like come out of their tomb and murder everyone and then go back because you know <laughs> the penal colony would not put up much of a fight here um 
Maybe it's early stages, but it's very weird. What do my advisors have to say? Spotting an intriguing pattern in the drawings of the symbols left by the prisoners. Hypothesis, they have a practical purpose. Requesting access to the mines and the rights to investigate the specimen, of the, uh, spe uh, the specimen for the Adeptus Mechanicus. Disappearing prison. What is the point of running away from a penal colony uh, from penal servitude if the entire world is a prison cell? No, Shireen. These Asmags could have found some sort of smuggling tunnel network or and are hiding down there. I'm leaning in this route. Like, it, 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 it might be smugglers. It might be something more mundane. But it could be GSC and it would be very, very interesting that they use, like, the Jukari's intervention to set up their network or expand it. And that's why we're only noticing now. Uh, and the drawings are their secret language, which they can use to give orders to their fellow prisoners. Mm -hmm. I know some guys who can find such pla uh, such secret places and decipher these languages. If some slaves continue to disappear for no reason, the unrest will soon follow. Sorry, then unrest will soon follow. Whether out of fear of disappearing themselves or out of hope for the possibility of escape. To stifle this, we have put pressure on the slave leaders. My experience suggests such people can hold more sway than any warden. Okay, so what are the benefits? Because Pascal might... If, if it's Necron, sending Pascal is a terrible idea. God knows what will happen to the planet then. Jay has a far better chance of finding GSC or dealing with that. Abelard, I don't think... If it's either of the first two... If, if it's a pirate den, Abelard is the correct way to go. If it's, if it's Xenos related, Abelard is a horrible way to go. Because either the... Leaders will never talk if it's GSC, or the leaders won't know anything if it's Necron. Because the Necrons are smarter than humans. So, this gives plus logic. Rogue Trace Service succeeded in identifying the and studying patterns in the peculiar drawings made by convicts. Okay. So that gives us insight into the symbols. Which makes me lead towards Necrom. Jay gives us a trinket? At the start of, why does it give us a trinket for investigating this? This is very weird. At the start of the wearer's turn, they gain armor deflection temporary wounds. When their wounds hit, drop to zero, they fall prone, gain 10% of factory wounds. It's Necrom. This is Necron reanimation protocol. Like, read it through. So, you gain temporary wounds... Just so, just a general useful trinket if you have a lot of deflection. Cool. When wearers drop to zero, full prone, gain 10% wounds as temporary wounds. The part about priority target is probably just so the AI actually hits you. While prone, if the wearer has no other allies on more than zero wounds, they all die. So, ending combat. You don't get to constantly resurrect. On the wearer's next turn, they regain 30% wounds and 30% uh, of the wounds they still have as. Uh, sorry, if they still have temporary wounds. So if you haven't put them to zero again, reanimation protocol activates and um, essentially they get back up. This is basically telling you how Necrons are going to function. So I, it's Necron. It, 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 it's weird that it's Necron because this doesn't make any sense. But I'm leaning that way. This trinket... Doesn't make any sense from a gene to the predictor, but it is basically how Necrons work. So, I am now shifting back to its Necron, and it's very weird I got that from a trinket. Uh, a flagship gains free speed in the first round. Nowhere near as good as you think it is. And even then, it's probably not that good. Like, even then, most, like, most people would not rate this that highly, I think. Um, so, question. Do we need a resurrection trinket? Or do we need these symbols to be fully categorised? Because let's be honest, having some understanding of Necron would make more sense, assuming it is them, which is, is highly likely to be. Uh, I'm tempted to go with Pascal's options. The servants of the Messiah are allowed to research any slaves that demonstrate odd behaviour. There is no sacrifice more worthy than the one done in the name of search of no for knowledge. The wise servants of the Messiah have interrogated the strange prisoners. Research on the brain tissue does not reveal any mutations, so it's not GSC. Because that would be a big tick. Uh, those slaves have 
who have completely lost their utility have been granted servitization in order for main production levels, but it seems in the end something was found after all. The drawings present to have are too, uh, been too symmetrical. They could have not simply been gibberish. The sets of repeating elements of dashes and dots are far too similar, but if it is indeed a secret language, judging by its complexity and possibly the impossibility of coding it, the language was not def uh, definitely created. It was definitely not created by a convict. Okay, but hopefully that has story triggers later on as to recognizing if it is Necron what we're dealing with here. I don't think Jay's option would have been a good idea if it is Necron. Like Jay's and Pascal's options were suspecting one or the other. If it's GSC, you go with Jay's option. If it's Pascal, uh, if it's Necron, you go with Pascal's option. I could be completely wrong. I am theorizing in the name of interest because I love these sort of more interesting like theories in it. It could just be, there's a smuggler down. Okay. Yeah, it takes all the fun out of it for me. But anyway, I've spent too long nattering on that. So what have we got as rank two options? So if I remember correctly, it was these two. And then... So that requires both. That requires the envi Oh, okay. So this op choice is going to affect this choice. Right. So remind me which ones of these are good. Torpedoes dealing more damage. It's okay, I guess. It's not particularly useful. This one we're going to ignore. I, I don't have a use for a chain X. Or a two-handed one, certainly. And prop effect we have plenty of. This one, this stuff is not particularly relevant. But the range damage is... Like, I understand this is taking away from the... Co the, the colonies seem to be self-running sort of uh, in between themselves. I'm not interested in the rewards of any of them. This is probably... It's probably two security for all colonies versus 5% range damage. I kind of like 5% range damage anymore, which I think means we have to go with this one. Which is the hit chance. Okay, so this is stacking on that. I did like the toxic resist thing, but I'm not sure exactly how much toxins get... If it's just Nurgle and Drukari that are doing toxic damage, that's not a huge deal. Uh, and then these three... Yeah, let's pick one of three here. Which I think we were going for this one, because I love the idea of these grenades. And then these three were just solo projects. Yeah, solo projects. I think we'll go... We have a decent amount of plastic, so we don't need to do this one yet. This is... All right, for a sacrifice of one chemicals, but it's not exactly a huge deal right now because I don't think this colony is producing that much profit factor. So let's up security. I'm probably then going to go with this into this, and then once we get unlock this, we'll do this one. Any other projects been done slash completed? I think we're just waiting on Cabalis mission reputation to do this. And this. Oddly enough, completing one, I think, does the other. Does, do they both have the same? It's like 29k on that one. They are exactly the same. That's a little annoying. But managing to push this to that number does make a difference. How close are we on that? Does it tell me our reputations anywhere? Without having to go all the way into the ship? So that's the cargo list. I wish there was just a button to see reputations. Nope. I am going to just click all the buttons just to make sure, but it would be very interesting to see that sort of thing from outside the perspective. Ooh, Inspection Master, what's this? Um, so we spend people to gain profit factor. I don't think that's particularly worth it right now. Might be if we need profit factor later on in the line. Um, reputation. Oh, here it is. Okay. So with Cabalus mission, we are 13k. And the colony needed 29? Was it? 29. So we need 16k of stuff. And I think we sold most of our Xenos artifacts. Although I think we have got some more off the Drukari. I should probably double check and catalogue that. We'll sort that out after, because I don't think we've got enough 
for now. After we've done this, we'll have a look how much we've got and try and reach that number. So, chart new routes first. Now that I've been babbling on. Okay, this does connect to both, so I assume this is just a triangle that connects to itself. That way it wouldn't have to worry about where you charted the route to. Uh, I guess we'll visit this system first. So, where to start? Four planets, let's start with the most out one. Okay, I got a landing point and two provisions. Don't particularly need two provisions. I am cautious with the extractions. I do suspect going further, they might extend the map. There are large blank areas on this map. So we're definitely going to need some more later. This isn't everything that exists in the game. I definitely know there's an Act 3 for certain, which I assume expands out. So let's land and see what's here. Wasteland Wayfarer. Yeah, I think we'll go with regular comp. We have no idea what we're landing into. But looks Imperial esque. Okay, how big's the map? Ah, oh. interesting. Attention to detail is the key to success. What was that? Something pinged. What pinged? Okay. Why am I getting Space Hulk vibes? Awareness? A trivial task. You hear the sa uh, a strange sound that reminds you of dripping water or the clattering of sharp against metal. Oh. Oh, you sods. Remember how I said they hadn't put GSC in the game yet? I think we just found them. So what's giving it away? One, these tunnels are Space Hulk-esque. Long straight lines, sealed doors on both ends you can lock out the gene stealers with. Dripping stuff and sharp, uh, something sharp against metal is gene steel claws. And look here again, sharp tunnels. Keep your wits about you. This is a bit of a stretchy read, but I'm more certain of this than I am with the colony. Like, this is screaming Space Hulk. Look at the layout. Crimson is a good colour for battle attire. Enemies will perceive no weakness. Ooh, that's a very high athletics chat. Might do that afterwards. I suspect we're going to get ambushed at some point. Like, door to door. This is kill team done very well. I wonder if this is a, a thing, like a montage. What's that say? The metal box was crucially fought open. Uh, why would the ship's owners break in something they could simply turn the key? Yeah. Screaming even more. And a Vox Cleric. Now GSC can... Oh, hello, what's this? Unknown Captain's Diary. A thick diary filled with entries written in neat, precise handwriting. Its author was documenting the events of his life for, uh, with furnace bordering on obsession. After browsing through its pages, the following entries catch your uh, attention. Exodus Watch 1. Never thought this day would come. I am dressed as Master Captain once more. How many times did I swear I'd never venture into the void again during these two Terran years I spent among the mangled ruins of the unheralded Reckoning's Bridge? Unfortunately, life in a gravity well didn't bring me peace. Reverend... I think that's the guy on Footfall. Promised me that performing a selfless feat of devotion would bring me sincerity. Maybe he's right, but I'm still waiting, uh, writing this journal during the long nights to keep my sanity, just like I did two, uh, for two years there and seven t uh, years after that. After that, here, we'll see uh, if I'm able to bring to live without the the somewhat. We'll see if I'm able to live without the somewhere that is our void wanderer's destination. Watch. 234. The crew is reporting strange noises from the ventilation. Yeah. Okay. We know what's there now. Question is, where the fuck are they? So this... So in the game up to this point, snipers have dominated the game. Let's be honest. 
Like, there has been cases where you need the AoE of, like, the Sister's Flamer, but for the majority of difficult fights, the snipers have been king. This is why snipers do not dominate the 40k universe. Stuff just runs through cover and just attacks you from nowhere, so sniper rifles are useless. Um, unless I'm char- uh, Sorry, the ship has reported hearing strange noises from the ventilation ships for a third time. I'm last- I'm charged with pilgrims, not seasoned voidsmen. Uh, the venture scares them, and they've already managed to make their uh, their share of absurd ghost stories. I asked Reverend uh, Gravik to calm them down. He's the official head of the pilgrimage, so they uh, so they ought to listen to him. The venture inspection's finished. Just as expected, there was nothing to worry about. Just some torn tubing striking the hull. That's watch 240, so that's three watches later. Watch 393. Reverend was wrong. Faith does not bring me peace. I prefer to not to take any sides in the theological dispute that's broken out on board our vessel, ignoring the debates all uh, altogether. I'll let Reverend Groundnick handle it. I'm slightly concerned about this schism, but as long as both groups are peaceful and uh, agree to follow my orders, they can bicker and shout all they want. Watch. This is over 400 days later. The great day has arrived. The Voyager on special landed on the planet Surf. I wonder if it will ever leave it. A settlement is already being built on down on the hill. It's official colonization, uh, colonize, coloni colonial designation. Um, uh, is a f I assume that's meant to be a free, not a i i i. Uh, six four nine minors. Oh, I skipped all the way back up there. I don't know how I did that actually, because that's saying oh, okay. This this watch go panel goes on for long. Uh, but Reverend Garrick said he's going to name it Jefferson. Jeeves Von. Uh, when we first stepped onto its surface, Reverend uh, Gizvar Cong uh, Reverend Garvik's congregation and the nourishers used different airlocks to leave the vessel. Sometimes uh, it seems like they've ceased any communication altogether. Watch one uh, twelve twelve. So this is over four hundred days after that. Today, the last of the pilgrims left the Wanderer for Jefferson. I'm alone once again. They invited me to go with them, but I made up an excuse I need about needing to keep watch at the rea uh, at the reactor since my ship is still going to be used for powering the settlement. True patrollers didn't want to go with them. They say if uh, less than a thousand pilgrims are still loyal to Gar uh, Garvik, the service at uh, the main temples are performed by the nourishers, and the Saint Junius sta uh, Jurus statue is cut only up to the knees. Interesting. I can't understand the beliefs, but I don't think they will help me more than uh, Reverend's faith. So this is 60 days after that. I was woken at night by a dozen pilgrims from Jefferson. They were armed and scared and said the nourishers had arrested Reverend Garvik. So the nourishers are the GSC. Note. They, are bewild they were bewildered and didn't know what to do, uh, what to do wanting for me to act. So I did. Since Reverend Garvik is the official head of the pilgrimage, I deemed this an in... in it, this incident, civil unrest. I cut the power to Jefferson and demanded Reverend Garrick's release via Voxcom. We are holding the line. Three days later, the nurses come out. Garrick was with them. He was calm and said that the conflict had been resolved. He got infected. Uh, he took confused pilgrims and their guns with him. I restored power to the settlement. I have no idea what's going on. Peace is uh, peace. The watch is no uh, is of no consequence today. I received the brotherly kiss. He got infected too. And now I believe I can see uh, the spiral path among the stars set for us by the Emperor Progenitor. So Emperor Progenitor is their word for the hive mind. So this is full on GSC. I can now hear my brothers and sisters. I am finally alone no more. We're dealing with a full colony of fucking gene stealers. So that Vox operator is... Gene steal a cult. Guaranteed. It's no longer a question. Too hard for a simple monkey. The ventilation system still works. There are strange gal uh, gouges on the on the metal. They look like claw marks of some beast trying to call its way into the shaft. What's this central area? Can I get into it? It's just a vent. Okay. That might be where the Primark is. Primark, by the way, is the leader of... Well, the most powerful of the... Um, no, it's Patriarch, isn't it? Not Primark. Primark is an entirely different thing. Don't get those two mixed up. You'll get shot. 
<laughs> so Patriarch is there. For some reason I said Primark. I have no idea why. I assume that was just some regular stims. I'll be honest, I'm not interested in stims. Some guy hurled up with uh, his last rations in a pistol. Probably the smartest man on the ship. Oh dear. Always keep right, so there, is there an ambush in this central room? If not, the ambush is here. Yeah, I'm glad I had a look around. So. First things first. Gene Steelers will win in close combat to us. Easily. Like, as deadly as, like, the Soleneshi demons have been. Gene Steelers will wreck us. And they're also really bloody fast. They aren't that tough, to be honest. Well, they shouldn't be. But they'll be tougher than, like, demon nets were. So, something along the lines of a blood letter with more speed. And they crawl out of bloody vents. Um... Hunched over the Vox caster, the hooded man uh, mutters mon uh, monotonously, but empathetically into the microphones as he rocks slightly to and fro. In the light of distant stars, our emperor, uh, emperor progenitor wanders warily with thoughts and visions of us. He senses particles of his light through his body. Uh, though his body suffers, his mind lingers on uh, lingers on us. Let us therefore nourish him with the light of our souls, with our prayers and our faith. Shoot that man on the spot. <laughs> yeah, Jenta realizes as well something's wrong. Uh, if Heinrich was here, he'd probably know. I don't know if Gillette would know. Like, GSC are incredibly suppressed in the knowledge. If, like, they're not really known that much throughout the, the Imperium, and that's a huge issue. Particularly, I think, we're, since we're just on the period of the um, fall of Cadia. So, they aren't quite <laughs> as understood as they are in the common 40k narrative at the moment. Um, the faithful worship of the Ember under a great many names and, and after a great many fashions. And yet, I do not like this prayer. Um, so, we can praise the Emperor. That's a terrible idea. That is a terrible idea. Put your hands up on your head. Yeah, so... Trying to arrest this guy, but I'm probably going to shoot him on the spot the second I find something wrong. Uh, do not make any sun moons, or else you'll be dead before we can become properly acquainted. The man falls silent. A satisfied chuckle with a hint of fear comes from under his hood. As long as our fa father progenitor thinks of me, I am eternal. Yeah, shoot this guy on the spot. Uh, with a pale hand, he throws back his hood. An ugly face with a flat, wide nose. Disproportionate. So he's a... He's a gene stealer breed. So essentially the way gene stealers work is they go in as a gene stealer, a pure breed, uh, and then they will infect humans with their DNA. That will produce the humans to start acting oddly. It's a very slow thing at first, but then the cultists will bring in more like people because they, they, they're not that different from regular humans. So they will just persuade, hey, hey, come look at this thing with me. In fact, that guy they just brought with them slowly growing number and then they'll start reproducing and then you'll have generations that steadily become more and more abhorrent i believe it's that way around it's either they start abhorrent or they end apart i can't remember which way around it is but essentially they'll become i think it makes more sense they're more abhorrent at the end and more like the gene stealers because then at the end they end up producing pure uh pure strain gene stealers that will go on then to infect more it's like a gene stealers act as like a recon beacon for tyranids so they'll go out find plants of activity set up cults and then those cults will do psychic stuff well i say psychic tyranids aren't strictly psychic but they'll send out like a beacon to draw in a high fleet that the planet is ready for eating and then when the time comes they'll undermine the imperial defenses and they all get consumed it's a long story on jesus i could go on it for hours but this is guy is clearly of probably one of the later generations so this point in large brow ridges uh irisless eyes with enormous pupils a wide toad like mouth yeah this guy is basically borderline gene stealer already a skin that uh transitions to purple scales on the cheekbones standing before you is an ob uh, abominable subhuman a mutant no it's not <laughs> it's not a mutant well it is but not by your definition welcome to the abode of the nourishers uh, look uh, closer at this misshapen man. The being's nature has strayed too far for the, uh, mankind's blessed genome. The creed sees no humanity in deviations like this, and so it commands that such creatures be exterminated without mercy. 
I just done this be a trap. Am I correct? Yep. Indeed, affected one. You have nowhere to run. The mutant shriek, uh, shrieks, grinning. May the grace of the progenitor be upon you. His words are piercing, become a swill uh, echo of a hundred voices. Yeah, so the hive mind speaking through him. Minds growing ever louder. It's torrent. Uh, it torments your mind. Before you know it, you reach for your weapon. Venerate the dark gods. That is the wrong call line. Gene stealers do not worship chaos. Um, you hear a clanging echo growing louder in empty modules, like a hundred chords striking bulkheads and grabbing onto bars. Well, whoever is advancing on you, there is a lot of them. You ought to run for your life before they trap you in this crammed box cabin. Countless foes in a cumbersome position. Oh, Emperor, I thank thee for giving us another chance to test the sweetness of battle and the swelled joy of courage, uh, courageous deeds. Sister, I fear we're about to take partake in something quite diff uh, different. Or more likely, someone is about to partake of us. Um... Make a dash for the box capsule and try to contact the ship, although they've probably blocked us out. DC the cult are very good at this. The box spirits are a torrent of static through which you uh, nevertheless manage to uh, catch fragments of words by a voice not unlike that of your box master. Von Fledger's command airlock. I assume that's meant to say. Uh, the signal is lost before you manage to say anything. So, we are surrounded by gene stealers. We have a heavy stubber. Now, admittedly, this does zero damage. But honestly, it'd probably be pretty effective versus g stealers. g stealers do not have a lot of health. The fact it only has three damage kind of weirds me out. How much damage does the LAS gun do? That's a hot shot. Uh, modified is like 5 to 12. Yeah, so... Honestly, underwhelmed by that. Like, you're firing a lot of shots... But unless your damage is increased by your rate of fire, that is not a good weapon. Which it shouldn't be, considering you're running around with bolters. Uh, so what's this guy got? Regular last gun. There's a regular last gun. So you get half the shots, but like double the damage. And then heavy level arm. Okay, nothing particularly to worry about. So. You know that loot I said we were going to pass on earlier until we dealt with stuff? Might be a bit of a problem now. Is our formation right? No. So... We are going to have to change things up because we're dealing with gene stealers. Gene stealers attack from all angles, and therefore we're going to have to switch to a line formation. Now the idea here is the snipers never end up in combat. If the officer goes down, not a big deal. Keep your wits about you. The sister should not be that good versus. Oh, and there it is. Hello, you gorgeous boy. So, um, meet your gene stealers. Similar stats to the Drukari, actually. Little more armor, little less dodge. Very tough. I wasn't expecting that level of toughness, but I guess that's because it's an elite. And you know, this is supposed to be a bit more of a ingrained gene stealer hype. Maybe it's supposed to be pure strain. Uh, natural armor. Oh, it's gonna lose armor as it goes. Okay, so it's got the same rules as beast, but then it's got beast or rage, which uh, it gains health depending on how it gains damage if it takes too much damage, and the brood instinct. Plants for prey, but hides for around every time damage is dealt to it. If two or more creatures of the same kind adjacent to it, the creature becomes fearless and stops hiding. Okay, so if they're in a single number, you can drive them off. And if there's multiple of them, you have to deal with them. Okay, so that's a very interesting setup. I'm going to assume we're going to get flanked during this fight. So Pascal is actually going to hold the rear door. The rear. In fact, he's going to hold the rear there. This is going to be unlike other fights we've done, if they've done it correctly. There's a lot of speculation I'm using here, I know. But, firstly, I don't think Abelard can really tank this. Yeah, it's got plenty of armor pen. It's not got a huge amount of base damage, though. But, its weapon skill is high enough that he will probably be able to get from it. And it should have multiple attacks. Although, it does seem to only have one. I don't see a fire rate here. What's on the hunt? It's Hunter the Road Trader's party, natural armor. I wonder whether we're just going to shoot it and then it's going to move. Is the deal here. So. Start of combat. Do our usual trick. Get the sister up there. I am... 
tempted to say, let's let Yolette have a go at this. If you insist, Lord Captain. Admittedly, she does not have the armor pen required for this to work properly. But she should be able to land enough initial hits for it to work. Pardon me. Um, so, what do we do first? First, let's get an opening. Where are your openings, sir? You haven't got one because it's not your let's turn yet. This tedium has been Stick an opening on it on the right side. Fire a dispatch into it. This is not going to do a huge amount of damage, but it will hurt it quite if badly. It serves your cause. Basically, a third helped it. And then we can fire another one just to get it bleeding. If I must. We might be able to drop this in the first turn because we are significantly over leveled for this. So, increased damage taken. Set up an execute block so that if it gets below a certain health, it'll die. This is all standard stuff, but I feel like saying it all. Honestly, considering whose turns are coming up, I'm tempted to do this rather than get Yolette in it because I'd rather increase the sister's damage in case she gets a turn. This is going at the back. In fact, this is going in the middle. I think the middle makes more sense here. Can I put it there? Now, the reason I'm doing that is I actually want people to use the middle as safety and Pascal to be the backstop, as it were, to keep people blocked. Trench line can go here. Then rip that thing's armor completely off it. And... You know what? No, I haven't got the stuff there. If I had the um, upgrade talent for Combat Locus, I could use it on this, then replace this, then do all the strat stuff, which would be very cool here. But for the moment, let's just try kill a genius deliver one turn. Okay, so you shift forward a bit because I don't like being so far back. We're going to have presumably have a look extended combat. If it's just one, I'm going to be very disappointed. So pop that. Pop everything and just try one shot the damn thing. I'll see to it personally. Again, I'm expecting, judging by the way their rules are set up, there's definitely going to be more than one of them. Um, I guess do a dead eye shot first, then do play the bounty on it, assuming it doesn't just pop. Or you know we could miss entirely. That's a thing. Um, do we have any more damage boost? How much armor do you have? You still have some dodge, but not a lot of armor. Actually, let's just pop that. Then pop this. Then pop this. And this should be enough. End of combat, or am I still having to move? No, so there's ex there's more. So the next gene still popped up over there. Okay. So I assume every time they're going to spawn, it's going to be like once a turn, and it's going to keep spawning in the middle. Is annoying, but not the end Honest. of the world. It's as good Pop as the done. bus for next turn, but since we can't move, it's not a big deal. Okay, uh, we're Be probably going to have to run, assuming this is a prolonged gates. combat. So, do that. Move, move, move Lafana. Get her all Let's the way across. Some opportunities. Can we assign objective over there? I don't think we can now. But we can buff Lafana all the way up. Isn't this a job for the serves? Do you have a shot on this guy? You do, although he's not going to do a huge amount considering the position we're in. Probably not worth the um this stuff, but we can at least peck him a little bit and see what we get done. Personally. Some damage at least. You should hopefully run from that. And then, considering this affects people throughout combat, I'm going to put this on Abelard, so he's a bit tankier. This is very different to the other fights they've had in the game, and I love it for it, but I'm going to have to be cautious as to where I get ambushed from. Put that there. Should be able to get a full setup with her. Your marks on the wrong side. I understand your intent. Fully stack on the damn thing. And then... I don't have enough action points to make that worth it, so I think we just try the one action point one and see how far it goes off the first shot. Cause. I 
keep forgetting how much damage that thing does. It's absurd. Um, yeah, I think we just bleed it. I am not your Xenos pet. And then can do that. If it, ever, if it pokes its face round while your let's there, it's dead. Right, so what was this? Athletic. So Abelard needs to get there. The sister can actually Enemies run all the way. This is going to be a full turn of movement done. from the sister. But she can run all the way down here and secure this next corridor entrance. This is actually very cool. I wish more of the game was like this. And then it, it, it's one of those where it seems odd to say that. But what you're doing is making do team comp relevant. This is far more like kill team in the actual uh, gameplay style. And that is a huge upgrade on what they've got uh, the rest of the time. Because you can use a lot of your stuff in varying ways. But it's not always applying to the situation. So for example the snipers having their long range stuff is irrelevant in this combat. Where it's really good for like here to here. And tanks become relevant because they can hold doors. Whereas tanks in the regular game are sort of a... They're a little unneeded right now. I don't feel we've met anything that required a tank since, like, the hell... Sorry, the Forge Fiend? Like, even the end of Act 1 boss didn't need a tank. Uh, I am gonna... Debating if I can get in range to get an attack on that. Faith without deeds is worthless. I can get to the end of the corridor. God That's good Emperor, enough. Through me. Be the fire in my heart. I don't think I'm in range to get a regular shot on it. But I can do this. Okay, let's get it off. Not what I was aiming for. How much range do you have on that? Not a lot. Get a reload off now. And then we'll the pop this and pop act, this. It. it should run away because it's taken a whole bunch of damage. But I'm not 100% convinced by the AI acting as it should. So Abelard's going to have to come here. Follow my lead. Can you charge to the thing? Need to be closer for interaction. Okay. Charge to there. Interact. I don't think that passed. It's difficult for me to say whether it did or not. Yes, it's going to run off, which is a problem, but not the end of the world. We are going to have to keep moving our things, which is going to be annoying. So it's annoying. I don't think we've got whatever was over there, but I don't think it's particularly going to matter. Um, I don't think any of the areas actually matter right now. I am going to put this here. Main reason being it gets on the corner, it'll have shots both ways. And it will also mean I can hang around here a bit more if I need to. I'm assuming you don't have line of sight on it. So that's going to be full cover. Uh, you do, but it's not a good line of sight. I think I'm okay leaving it up. Don't think I can get through here anymore. Taking calculated risk is my second nature. I assume he got fatigued or something. Uh, not apparently. Doesn't particularly matter either way. So, yeah, I guess just move, move, move. Are always drowned in scarlet. Voice of command I'm on Yolette so I can get the movement thing on her. Around. Although I'm going to try this first. If Maybe I she'll have a better shot on the gene stealer. And then she can execute it. Ooh, that thing healed quite a lot, actually. So... Do we think it healed enough that it's going to survive her combo? I don't think I it did. Your intent. Presuming that's where the next one is. Next one's all the way at the exit. Okay. That's not too terrible. But then we can use move and move I to get Yolette all the way over here. Not a servitor. So the sis is going to be the next one engaged. Which is fine. Uh, can we put this on the sister now? No. So maybe if we did it on Lafana. Lafana can get up somewhere more relevant and start getting shots on that thing. All the buffs. Try and at least wound it, if not kill it in one turn. On it. 
Interesting that all of these abilities cost zero, because I'm now just going to pop them all because they cost zero. And therefore this first shot is going to do an extreme amount of damage in theory anyway. Who, if not me? It's as good as done. Decent chunk. It does seem to be they're getting tougher. No, about 300 was fine. Uh, um, probably keep firing regular shots into it until it we feel we need to cull the bold. But the sorry, to cull the um, claim the bounty. Cull the bold's this one. <laughs> okay, I don't think we're gonna drop it this turn, but we've set it up that Yolette, Yolette might be able to drop it. And then pull out the toxic rifle and stick that in it. See, I don't think it's going to kill, but better than nothing. Might kill with the toxin. The best defense is a good offense. Yeah, that's your turn done. Might as well pop this on you just to make everyone a bit tougher. And then you'll like get around the corner. Should just be able to one tap it. Oh, it's things on the right side as well. It is so dead. It has three HP, and now it doesn't. Only three gene stealers. I'm sorry. What? I was expecting more. Okay, that was a cool idea. That was a lot more interesting combat, but only because I thought I had to leave. And also, this is bugged annoyingly because that didn't work Rise I think, to the in top combat. Or get left hmm. in the dust. Interesting. Uh, so I guess we're going to have to leave that then because I can't think of a way to go pick it up. He had stuff on him though. So we can go pick that up. There should be a lot more of these. The Is exit to this to area out? should be you're getting swarmed by gene stealers and what to do about nuking the planet. Because to be honest that's the only way you're done. Okay, they're saying there's something there, but I've picked up that stuff twice. I might Let us not see if I can pop out and come back in, but it's good to know they're in the game. Because that leaves a lot of potential for later on. What's this? Lost in the void. A wasted where has been found on a world destroyed by ungodly Xenos. Football is still waiting news. Okay, so that was some rumor we had. Can we go back there? No, so that entire place is gone. So whatever the loot was, I hope it wasn't important. Uh, what else we got? Begin scan. Not explored. Small planet gently wraps in amber forest greets you with a ruby-colored uh, ruby dawn. Basil von Clearach, the local governor, gives the rogue trader a warm welcome. After several glasses of Des Demacine... Uh, the sweltering ruler, the sweltering, asked if Lafana would uh, like to keep him company during keep him company during the upcoming hunt. Sure, why not? After several hours of riding, uh, of riding the local peculiar animals, you can make ca you make camp in the middle of a golden forest. Basil von Clearac points at the sky. A flat disc rises above the horizon, constantly morphing its shape and color. The forest grows silent and empty. You can hear, no longer hear the singing of birds or even the rustle of wind. The governor nods with satisfaction, and a few shape, uh, shapes step into the clearing. Their bodies are twisted by an unknown phenomena, and you can what you and at, and you watch the freaks with astonishment as they begin to dance with the uh, to the froaky crackling of their brethren, turning to, uh, turning the bony groves and pulsating flesh of their scaly hands towards the unnatural thing in the sky. Um. I'll be honest, I want to execute everyone here. That's probably the sensible thing to do, but I have no idea what's going on. So ask the governor what's going on. The, co the governor smiles coyly. You're about to uh, see with your own eyes what is happening. Um, no. No, we're not. Having armed themselves with flamers and chainsaws, your party clear out several acres of nearby forest. Scout reports destroying... Visit several villages inhabited by heretical entities. Yeah, this entire planet is infected. Basil von Clerk ex uh, excitedly explains that the creature you saw, the creatures you saw, are the children of the great king of distortion. It is he is the true god and patron of these fortile grounds. Once every cycle, 
His chariot shines its light upon the world and bestows its transformation upon his most ardent followers. The rogue trader may become one of his heralds. Um, no. Kill that guy on the spot. Uh, the governor leaves. Uh, the governor's head separates from his neck with a distinctive squelch. Black and brown blood, so not red, seeps in the, uh, into the soil beneath his cop uh, corpulent body and is immediately transformed into a writhing, uh, writhing tangle of worms that burrow deep into the ground with unnatural speed. You return to the ship pondering what to do with the world and more importantly what to do with the King of Distortion. Honestly, it sounds like Zeech magic. It's very odd for Zeech magic. Maybe Zeech combined with Nurgle? But it's one or the other. And it ain't good. I don't know whether we're ready to deal with this. But I don't think we get a choice. I don't particularly want to come back here. Order the crew chart course to the anomaly known as the King of Distortion. Senior officers observe suspicious activity emanating from the terrestrial's, uh, twisted celestial body at the heart of the system. The chaplain advises you to get ready for a potential encounter with the spawn of, arch, of the arch enemy, so you may be wise to reconsider unless you have holy relics, sacred wards, or blessed effigies of the Emperor. Well, I guess we didn't get to reconsider. Um, flame of the peripheral colours, the distorted celestial dis te uh, trembles slightly beyond the endless windows of the captain's bridge of the rogue trader's ship. Approaching, uh, approaches its center. An otherworldly voice, cold and enveloping, enters your mind. What could this puny wretch possibly offer a king? The officers on the bridge look around, perplexed, their eyes filled with terror and confusion. Many clutch their heads in a house of pain. Some empty their stomachs, most, uh, mo but most, pale and exhausted as they are, have joined the Lord Captain in resisting the entity's influence. Ask who you are talking to. An endless flow of images fills your conscience. You can see horrifying. You see horrifying scenes of millions of tortured souls. Their screams rend your mind. Their pain pierces you with a thousand, uh, with a thousand red hot needles. King, ruler, the one who is obeyed. That is all you can make uh, sense of. Although you see much more. Um, command the entity to release the minds of the amber worlds from its grip. The king mo uh, mocking, uh, mocking laughter rings in your ears. A deep red trickle runs from your nose over your lips, leaving an aftertaste of salt and metal. Okay, so attacking this thing with cannon, if it's a demon, does nothing. It's a terrible idea. Leaving the entity alone means we'll have to come back here later, which is not the worst thing in the world. Let's be honest. Order a ship ride, thousand voice service of a holy relics for protection. Uh, um, if it's a demon, faith in the emperor does occasionally do stuff. So I think I'm going to go with this option. We'll see how bad it goes. So we gain two holy relics. Deafening gong strikes are heard across hundreds of decks. Your eyes are misted with red, uh, and your gums ble uh, bleed as your subjects fall to the knees all at once. In the shared prayers of the God Emperor, the holy relics and the ship's temples melt from the uh, from the adore of your speech. The entity screams and writhes inside your brain, uh, struggling to break out. Many drop dead during the first minutes of prayer, unable to resist the corruption. However, others immediately take their place, unfazed by the sight of their fellows turning into dust in seconds. Then a nauseating uh, stench engulfs the ship deck like a wave, causing people to retch forth their innards. Finally, every deck of per a plunge into darkness. Ghosts of the past walk among the living, stealing uh, breath from those weak of spirit, and still the prayer is not extinguished. It's hard to tell if the prayer service has lasted several hours or several days. At some point, you feel your very essence overflow with heat and power, and then the intruding will, uh, will falters. The distorted disc vanishes from the ship's organs as if it had never been there, and at long last, everything is quiet. As everyone slowly recovers from what just happened, reports become, uh, come into the captain's bridge. You've lost a third of your crew in an unequal fight, and the fortresses of Nivers are going to take some time to come round. All hail the rogue trader. For the Imperium, only half third of the crew is dead. 
That's fine. Everything's fine. What do you mean everything's no longer... Don't worry about it. It's fine. Okay. I mean, this is still lit. Golden Forest of the Emerald look enchanting even from orbit. Uh, um, proclaim yourself the Sovereign of Amberworld? I mean, we just save it from whatever that thing was and basically destroyed a god. Sure. Um, so we get people and an extractor. Sure. Uh, from the moment the world, for the, from that moment, the world belongs to the rogue trader alone. Your people eradicate the settlements, housing and unclean followers of the profane cult. Good. The corruption is still by the, uh, king of the social loosened grip and the estates of Amberworld can be aside for the league thanks to the efforts of their new ruler. Yet malicious servants of the art enemy still lurk in the shelves, waiting for the right moment to wrap this planet in a web of heresy. Evil does not simply disappear without a trace. Um... Demand a tribute for losing a third of my crew. This isn't technically Iconoclast, but I feel it's warranted, given the state of things. So we get some provisions, a mobile extractor with people. I assume that's the stuff we had already. Relief to be free from the uh, Archimedes joke, planetary subjects, great, please send you their humble gifts. Okay, given the fact that seeming to lose a third of our crew doesn't actually have any in-game effect, I think that's fine. <laughs> It just makes no sense. Okay, so... Is this still up? If I click it again, what happens? Okay, so that's all done. It's just hanging there. I suspect we might be able to come back to that later. Come back to that later. Maybe in a future act. Right, let's get the rest of this system done, and then that'll be this episode, which was a doozy. That is a lot to uh, take in. Two plasteel. We do have a lot of extractors now, but I'm still not that desperate. I'm going to use two plasteel. Sorry, one for two plasteel. That, that's like a hard rule I'm making of myself. Seven plasteel. It's like, this is the difference. Like, you can get one that's two and one that is three and a half times the amount in the same system. We'll pick up this one because we were running a bit low on plasteel, but I think this has all worked out fine. I assume nothing's happened on the colony front. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, that's still building. Okay, so with that all said and done, I think I'll leave it there for this episode. Very interesting developments in the game terms. What the hell was this? And Gene Stealers, hello. So um, yeah, I'll leave it here and I'll see you guys in the next one.